You are watching Limited Resources Draft Series on MTGO Academy featuring Marshall Sutcliffe. Hey guys, Marshall here from Limited Resources doing another draft video for MTGOacademy.com. And uh, hello, lightning strike. So a nice, a nice rare here with Sliver Hive Lord, but as you may have figured out, it's basically uncastable and unplayable at this point. Um, Necromancer's stockpile is not worth going for. Um, I like a military intelligence. I like a shaman of spring. Raise the alarm, I think, and and lightning strike actually do start to approach the same area. But I'm definitely on the lightning strike camp between those two. I think you. Hmm. <laughs> now that's interesting. Uh, I think that they're, they're in the same, basically the same camp. But uh, I think I like lightning strike a little better because you don't have to fight quite as hard, and red is still very good color. Um. Second pick here, we can go a lot of different directions. I think a Netcaster Spider is a card that I definitely would keep my eye out for. Um, a Belligerent Sliver or a Torch Fiend would be fine, but but ultimately really unexciting. Um, a Turn to Frog or a Divination, I'd like both of those. I like Research Assistant okay as well. Maybe we get back the, uh, maybe we get back the I don't know military intelligence or something like that. I think I'm going to take the Netcaster Spider. I just think it's the best card here. And uh, we can kind of figure out where to go from there. Uh, I think I like just take, picking up a Siege Worm here. There's some decent cards in this pack, like Kinsbale Skirmisher. Yeah, Belligerent Sliver. Again, it's okay. But I think Siege Worm is pretty good. And, uh, and I'll take that here. All right, here's an interesting pack. Some more good blue cards. Turn to Frog Divination. There's a decent green card with Seder Wayfinder. Seder Wayfinder can do some work as well. I might just take that. Um, otherwise, we're, we would take like a Divination or a Turn to Frog, but I'll take the Wayfinder. We don't have to be in red. Uh, looks like green's eh, a little open, maybe. And, uh, you know, maybe, maybe we splash the Lightning Strike and move into black and make the green black deck, or, you know, maybe we just go in a different direction altogether. I think I like just sort of solidifying green a little bit more than moving into a third color or taking a mediocre red card here. That reflects my, my general draft strategy pretty well, too. I, I like to try to keep pretty tight into one color in pack one with a few feelers on other, on other ones for either potential splashes or actually just to go into another color. Um, but in that way, this leaves us the most options for pack two. All right, well, we picked up a Shaman of Spring here, and I'm fine just picking that. Again, same reasoning, like... Nimbus of the Isles is a perfectly good card. Um, Selfless Cathar is fine, right? But why, right? Like, I'd much rather just try to stay in these colors here. Okay, uh, I like to pick up a Goblin Rough Rider here. I think it's a perfectly fine card, and it's even in what look to be our colors. Um, Sign and Blood's a nice one, but I think we can just take a Rune Claw Bear here. Um, and just, again, stick on plan. If we end up being green-red, sure. I'm fine with that. I, I don't have a problem with that at all. And I think that probably Rummaging Goblin over Battlefield Forge makes sense. There's a couple of Coral Barriers here, but those don't really bother our deck that much. I could take a Battlefield Forge here and try to stay open, um, but Rummaging Goblin's pretty good. I'll take the Rummaging Goblin. All right, well, here's the pack that we opened, and I'm just going to mize away a Sliver Hive Lord here. <laughs> I'm going to take the Sliver Hive, too. <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll do this. We need to get back at least both of those uh, belligerent slivers, and it looks like neither is going to come back here for us. So I'll take a sideboard card, I guess. Yeah. Jeez, that's a late divination. I'm going to pick it up. See what happens in the next pack. Glad to see that Statute of Denial go away. When you're playing a big green deck, sometimes that card can get you. All right, so a reasonable start. And let's see where we go from here. Hmm. Well, there's definitely a few directions to go here. Triplicate Spirits is the best card in this pack. Uh, we have generally avoided white. Uh, white didn't seem super open in the first pack to me. Uh, you know, there's a few things that were kind of reasonable in white in the middle part of the pack, but 
we weren't getting past any premium stuff. So I think we can avoid triplicate spirits here. Which leaves us with Inferno Fist, Forge Devil, Phyto Titan, Wall of Mulch. Now, Phyto Titan's a card that I think is pretty good, but not great. Uh, I'm not super excited by it at all. And I think I'd rather have an Inferno Fist or a Forge Devil over it. So I'm going to take the Inferno Fist here, because I think it's more powerful, generally speaking. It kills bigger stuff. And that's good. Uh, yeah, I think we want another Siege Worm more than we want the uh, Paragon there. And here's an Altac Bloodseeker, which I think we want over a Wayfinder or a Verdant Haven. Or a Miner's Bane. Yeah, I like, the, I like these two pickups here. Like Inferno Fist Bloodseeker is pretty good. Uh-oh. Wow, I don't know what that was about, but... Looks like we're back online here. Um... This pack sucks for us. Wow, this pack's bad for us. Titanic Growth. We, we have to pass a, a Rats, which is really annoying. Appeal from Reality can be really annoying. Yeah, Titanic Growth it is. I mean, I don't mind Titanic Growth. It's not the Titanic Growth. It's just the place where we picked it. We, we don't want to take it that early. Uh, this pack's got some good cards in blue and black and white, and we're going to pick up a Living Totem, which is an okay card. Not much here. A Torch Fiend or an Evolving Wilds. I think I'd rather just have the Evolving Wilds be able to maybe splash for something. Yeah, like white. Yeah. Eh, let's see now. Maybe there's also a Scrapyard Mongrel and a Bear here. Sunblade Elf is pretty good late in the game. Although we can just make bigger bigger things here it looks like yeah I'll take it just in case all right rough rider brood keeper uh, we don't currently have anything I don't think outside of inferno fist that goes with brood keeper I do like a brood keeper though that card can really change the the way a game plays out and i'm going to take the brood keeper normally i think i'd take the rough rider but i want to gamble a little here here's a vine weft we could take that to go with the brood keeper but i think wall of mulch is just better and uh, maybe it maybe a hammer hand i'd play but vine weft is pushing it a little bit crowd's favor or plummet i'll take the crowd's favor actually I think that might actually just make the cut. It's really good with Siege Worm. All right, I'll take a Verdant Haven, I guess. Maybe this guy peeks back in again. Verdant Haven, Evolving Wilds. Yeah, doing it? Probably not. Hmm. Oppressive Rays. Interesting. We could splash it with our Sunblade Elf and then put it on our rum not our Rummaging Goblin, our Brood Keeper. Make a dragon. Just combo off. Okay, what do we got here? Ah, uh, not a lot. An Invasive Species or a Crowd's Favor or a Blast Fire Bolt or another Sunblade Elf. I think we really just want to take the species here. It's a solid card. Like, it's not exciting at that point in the draft, and looks like none of these are either. Yuck. Take this Evolving Wilds. Mm -hmm. We need to get a uh, Constricting Sliver. Make it worth our while. Here's a goblin rough rider. Maybe we get back get back get back Nissa's expedition. Then we could, then we could have sliver hive lord divination. That's it. <laughs> and apparently we're just in the wrong colors. So hammer hand or will forge golem here. 
if I take the hammer hand, it's pretty good in the deck. Like it can just get in a bunch of damage or work with Broodkeeper. Or I can just take another big fatty with Willforge Golem. I think we just want the hammer hand here, actually. It just goes a little better with what we're trying to do. All right. Another Shaman of Spring. I'll take it. I like that pickup, actually. That's that's not bad. Uh, for We don't have any fives or anything, so going four drop into Siege Worm seems pretty good, and I like the idea of, uh, of kind of grinding a bit here, you know, like Shaman of Spring, Shaman of Spring is, is really nice. So do we want a Rune Claw Bear or a Vine Weft? I think we just want a Rune Claw Bear. I mean, Vine Weft is just so not attractive. Like, it's just not what we want to be doing. <laughs> right? It's another Evolving Wilds. Uh, this is getting kind of funny. Blue seems open. I'm going to take the Revoker, but blue definitely seems to be the color that is the most open here. Uh, Miner's Bane, yeah. Scavenger, do you do anything in this deck? Probably not. Here's the Expedition. There's also a Mercurial Pretender, which we could easily splash. Now let's go for the Expedition. Let's go big. Stutter, unmake the graves. And then we got the Vine Weft anyway. Sure. So we can totally cast Sliver Hive Lord. <laughs> I don't know if there's any incentive to do so, but we could do it. We can also splash for divination. I mean, Sliver High Lord is a sweet card. We've got Verdant Haven, this is Expedition, Triple Evolving Wilds, and a Sliver Hive. Probably not worth it, though. Got a pretty solid little deck here anyway. I think the Wayfinder does much for us, nor does the Wall. I think this looks like a deck to me. Plus something. I guess the wall. I mean, we do just run the Wayfinder. How about that? Like that. And we throw in like two Evolving Wilds and a Plains or something. Just for Sunblade Elf activations later. That's not bad. I mean, I want to go for the Sliver Hive Lord, but like. What does this really do for us? That's that's the thing I can't. Like it's not that good. If we get the hive and the hive lord together, then I would do it. But they don't always come together. Sometimes they're they're separated. And you don't get to go off. So I don't think I'm going to do it. I think I want to build a deck like this and put like one planes in there just for this guy, because we are running 18 creatures, a bunch of little dirtles down here that can get a lot better. And we'll go with one of these. Like that. Deck is not great. We'll see what it does. If you'd like to exchange your Magic Online cards for event tickets while logged in on Magic Online, you can do so by trading MTGO Academy's official bot, Academy Bot. You can find it in the Magic Online trading area or add it to your buddy list. All right, here we are for the first round. And we've got a, a, an unexciting hand, but I do think it's a keep. I mean, we get to go Rune Claw Bear, Rummaging Goblin, and then we can get rid of a land maybe or whatever. Our our deck is not particularly exciting, so I think hands like this are something we're going to have to get used to. 
One thing I wanted to mention, uh, I've been reading the the comments. I always read your guys' comments. Sometimes I can answer. Sometimes I don't have time. It's just a time thing. But I do read them. Um, and amidst the you should have done this or that's, which which I always appreciate. I, I, I read those, and I'm like, yeah, you're probably right. Um, I did notice that some people said uh, that they – so I, I keep this phase bar closed here. You can do this over here. And the reason I do that is because the cards get so tiny that you have to bring them up. And then, well, you'll see what happens. The cards that I play on the battlefield end up being just postage stamps. I mean, look how small that thing is. And oh, this guy seems nice. Uh, you too. Uh, but if I make that thing go away, then I can bring this down a little bit. And I can get like them sort of balanced out at least a little bit. But I did read a couple people said that they they need to see that so that they know what what stage they're in for for learning purposes which is of course the whole reason to do these videos so i'd like to know from you if you could tell me either in the comments on the video or talk to me on twitter i'm marshall underscore lr um, and let me know um, and also i saw a couple people were complaining because people were asking for clan invites while i was on and that and i was answering it i, I try to keep those to a minimum um you know, the problem is that people can't leave me messages anymore uh, on Magic Online. I used to be able to be left a message so that I could have those sitting there and then get to them when I had the time. And if somebody pinged me, it would just pop up. But I was like, yeah, whatever. And that's not the case anymore, though. I have to actually do it when I'm online. So it gets a little bit tough. Um, but if those are really bothersome for you, I can work out a way uh, to not have to answer those. Um, and I'd like to hear that too. Um, I prefer to be able to still invite people. I, I, I try to not do like most of the time I'm inviting people is when I'm paused or not recording. I just let it, let their messages sit. A lot of times you can't see them because they're down here off the screen. Um, and they'll just pile up and then I'll, I'll answer them in between rounds, but occasionally I'll answer one in the video. And I have to admit part of the reason that I do that is so that I can, um, is he going to attack? I will block. No attack. All right. Um, part of the reason why I do that is because I want to show people that are watching the video how they can join the the LR clan as well. And uh, so, you know, I don't know if, if that's really annoying, though, like, then I won't do it. Um, I'll just mention it at the end or whatever. Uh, so let me know. I'm curious to hear the feedback. Of course, I mean, I make these videos for you. I want them to be as good as they can be for you. And uh, and if you let me know, I can I can make any adjustments. I'm gonna I'm gonna play with the uh, with the bar up for this game, so that you guys can get a feel for what that's like. Um, and then I'll I'll do one probably later with the bar gone and and give you a comparison so you can make a decision for yourself. And again, you can let me know either in the comments of this video or uh, via Twitter. Uh, I'm Marshall underscore LR. You can let me know there too. Thank you. Marked by honor. We have no no possible answer for that. So we are going to take a beating from this kin Kinsbale skirmisher, at least until we get Siege Worm down. Lightning strike. Well, where were you a minute ago there, pal? Where were you? All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, or still one mana away. Play this and do I really need to keep up lightning strike? I don't think I do. Probably going to get rid of that mountain. Because now we actually have something that can tussle here. That was River Marshal. Sure, that's a good target for us to lightning strike something in the block with our Bloodseeker. Soulmender shouldn't matter. We'll take a hit from Skirmisher. Or actually, hmm, this gets interesting now. Yeah, he's not even going to attack. I was going to say, I, I think we just double block there. All right, let's start the loot train. Revoker. Revoker's decent here. We could name Soulmender or we could name Dauntless River Marshal, but he can't activate that right now. And Soulmender, who cares? is kind of my my thought process there. Let's get this worm down. 
So like, here's a good example. I, I just got a chat request, but you guys can't actually see it. Now, if I click away, I realize that this is super annoying, right? And so I try not to do that because I know it's just very jarring to have things go on the top of your screen there. Uh, but beyond that, I think it should be fine. We'll do three, four, five, six, seven. Eh, I think I want to leave back a little more than that. So let's do this. I'm not going to be using you. And I'm not going to be using you. The Worm Father, he has arrived. Uh-oh. Fifth mana. See if he just ships the old team in here. Yep, so we know he, what he has. He's got Sanctified Charge, and we just have to block accordingly here. So that probably means Siege Worm here. If we do that, we take 6, 11, 12, 13, 14. We almost die. So we probably want to throw one Rune Claw Bear in front of a Swift Claw as well to make sure that our life total, total stays high enough. So let's block here. And here, and this is going to maintain our life total as much as possible and also make sure that we kill a Dauntless River Marshal as well. So we take nine here, I think. Yes, go to seven, but he loses his guy. That part doesn't matter. And we get to untap with a grip. So this actually works out pretty well for us, I think. Um, I think I would rather just see if we can draw a creature here. Or that. That works too. Go ahead. I'm just going to say go. I'm going to be a little conservative here just in case he's got like another sanctified charge. Though I think if he does, we're in pretty decent shape. I'm still not really care about playing Revoker on Solmender. I'd rather see if he's got something else. Hopefully this will get us there. That's kind of the train that we're on right now. I'm going to start attacking with Siege Worm, though. That's fine. All right, well, we got to go for it here. So I'm going to block with Siege Worm and go for Titanic Growth. Obviously, we're running the risk of uh, getting hit by a uh, Devouring Light here. But we can't take five, and we're not going to chump block. So this is our play. We're going for a three for one. He's going to try to, he can two for one us back if he's lucky. All right, out of gas. And now we're in business, kids, especially after that. So let's battle with Siege Worm. Do we want to fight with anything else? No. Let's fight with Siege Worm here. Hit you for five, and then we're just going to play another Siege Worm here. Pretty good blockers. And hopefully we're just going to run them over with these two siege worms. Another river marshal, still no island. Well, now we know that if we do need to play the Phyrexian Revoker at like some early stage, we can just name river marshal, especially if we've already seen an island. Let's keep this uh, cards flowing here. 
find a mountain. That's not really going to do it, but... Um, do I want to attack with this Bloodseeker? 5, 10, 12. No, this is a two-turn clock. We don't need to attack with Bloodseeker. All right, well, I can't resist this. This is going to get in for nine damage, which is essentially equivalent to half of his life total. And it's going to leave us with an active Siege Worm as well. And I'm just going to go ahead and name Solomander here. Oh, he let me do it too, so that means he doesn't get to gain the life this turn, which probably doesn't matter, but it could. He's just going to scoop. I was just going to attack with everything anyway. We don't really fear the crack back in that scenario. All right. Is there anything that we want? Maybe a wall of mulch. He's more aggressive than we are. I like the fact that we can go bigger than him. What was that? Hunter's ambush? No. Oh, Hunter's ambush. Hmm. Hmm, maybe we just want a hunter's ambush. Preventing any combat damage to build up by non-green creatures this turn. It's got a lot of white creatures. And a sanctified charge. Let's bring in the hunter's ambush. Let's do that. A removal, thankfully, matches up pretty nicely against him as well. This looks like a keep to me. I love the Seder Wayfinder against him. Let's do this, by the way. All right, so you guys can be your own judges here about how you feel about this uh, the sizing difference. I think that at least, at least for me, I, I think I like it a lot. But it, it is hard for me to say because I've gotten pretty used to the thing. I have made a few mistakes as a result of that ladder, though not too many. So it's not a big deal. I can do it either way. Let's find the way. Hopefully we hit a land. Oh, we don't. Wow. All right. Well, I guess I'm glad I cleared away all those non-land spells, those sweet, juicy non-land <laughs> spells. But we've got a decent, we got a pretty decent little situation here anyway. Geist of the Moors. Oh, nice draw. I think I want to go with Inferno Fist. And I'm just going to kill the Geist. Figure I might as well do it on his turn. Keeps him from doing some things. Uh, if he had a ephemeral shields, he would have used it anyway. Paragon. Paragon, huh? So this doesn't change anything for the Geist of the Moors. I'm going to go ahead and kill it now, though. I think I can let the Paragon live. And we'll just we'll have better stuff. This unfortunately makes this matchup poor. But I think that we're just gonna like I can this turn I can play a living totem. Yeah, I'm just gonna play a living totem this turn and put a counter on the wayfinder.
That way the living totem can block the paragon and the wayfinder can block the swift claw. And this sets up siege worm for next turn as well, which is kind of where we want to be. Just going bigger than him, that's the idea. All right, marked by honor. Seriously, considering just trading off here. Yeah, I'm going to do it. If he's got the pump spell, I can live with that. I still have uh, Rough Rider plus Bloodseeker next turn and then into Siege Worm. And we're, we're not going to be able to play around that pump spell anyway, so I'll just take a two for two here. Uh, I think I still want Rough Rider and Bloodseeker as opposed to Netcaster. I think I want to start attacking here. Or at least have the option to. Like if we draw land, I'll probably go land, attack, tap Bloodseeker plus all my lands for Siege Worm. If we don't, I'll probably just play the Siege Worm. All right, so now he's got the Dauntless River Marshal, so going to have to find something for that. In the meantime, let's just play Siege Worm. Yeah, we take a little hit here if he wants to use up his turn worth of mana to tap our worm, but that's uh, okay with me. This being gone hurts, though. We had to use an Inferno Fist on the Geist, else we would have taken a billion damage, though now that we've drawn the Netcaster Spider, obviously I wish that wasn't the case. So if he's out of gas, he'll probably start using his Dauntless River Marshal because, hey, why not? And he looks like he's going to go the control route here with his Dauntless River Marshal. That makes some sense. So I think I want to start attacking. He's going to tap down the worm. But that means I get to attack with both of these. And that's pretty good for us. River Marshal is really good, but it's also a little clunky. You know, he's got to use up tons of mana to get this through. And a sweet blocker with Netcaster Spider. Interesting. Uh, this looks like a good one for us. I think this Titanic growth could be a huge blowout here. That is what we call a huge blowout. I mean, obviously there's some risk to us doing that, but it's certainly the right play to make. And that is just huge for us here. I'm just going to get this stuff out of the way now. And Paragon with no friends is happy news for us. As is swinging for 12. Go. Yeah, that Titanic growth was just huge, just absolutely huge for us. Straight up two for one, killed his best, best creature, left our creature alive even. He's got seven mana, so he could play a cleansing or no, not cleansing. All right, it looks like we won. Uh, Mass Calcify is what I was thinking of. 
Um, anyway, give me feedback on the whole uh, face bar or not. And then, like I said, I'll, I'll, I'll keep trying to minimize. Like, I've got three messages waiting for me right now. Uh, that I've just ignored, which is what I normally do. And then I usually try to catch up, but I will occasionally jump in and, and do one. Um, but I want feedback. So, so let me know about both of those things. See you guys in the second round. Do you love to play Magic Online but have a tight budget? Check out MTG Academy's Academy Budget Bot in the Magic Online Classifieds. All cards in stock are cheaper than one event ticket. All right, we here are for the second round. I'm going to bring this back. And do we have a keep here? Doesn't look like it. Um, if we draw a land, what happens? I can... Hmm. I can draw a land, play Bloodseeker, have Crowd's Favor up, Lightning Strike, maybe get a Totem going. I just need to draw lands a little too much for my comfort. If Because if we don't draw lands, the game ends, we just lose. Uh, I'm going to have to mulligan this one too, I think. <laughs> I'm going to mulligan this one as well. And we've got to keep. All right, typhoid rats. Lovely. Uh, yeah, let's get this out there. There are ways we could win this game on a mold of four, but there's not a lot of them. Take one for the team here. Okay. Um, double green, double green, one double red, but they're super far down the line. It's probably better just to get the planes just on the crazy off chance that we rip the uh, the guy. Our uh, our little friend. Species picks up rats, I guess. Well, we can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this draw so far. Um, I have a hunch that we're going to need to run very well and draw, draw something to put onto Broodkeeper as well, though. Rough Rider says go. What could he have? If he wants to trade Rough Rider for Death Toucher, I think I can live with that. The question is, do I attack with the Rune Claw Bear as well? I don't think I do, though. I think he's just going to trade the Rats. That's good. We want to get that out of the way because the Rats is very good against Titanic Growth. And now, for our next trick, da 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 da, we will draw an Inferno Fist. Uh, well, he used Ulcerate to kill our Broodkeeper, which is annoying, but could be a lot worse, I think. That's a pretty good draw, too. No dice. What happened? Oh, a scavenger? Hey, there's the Inferno Fist. Doesn't do a ton here, but it should get the job done. That's pretty good. Hmm. 
Hmm, that was actually <laughs> kind of one of those. <sighs> what do I do here? Do I attack with the Rough Rider? I can trade the Rough Rider and the Inferno Fist for the Rot Feaster Maga, but he's still got three cards left. Uh, this is just too rough. All right, I'll just say go. Not a lot of great options here. I'm just going to block here. This way there's no tricks that can really get us. And we get one of his big threats off the battlefield. But, of course, he's got another maggot. Yeah, this is... This win, this mold of four is not going to be in our favor. Now, I think this time we have to hope to draw a uh, Siege Worm. Did I spend too much? Yeah, I did. All right. All right, so this is going to be a tough matchup either way. But, of course, with a better draw, we have a better chance. I think we want to bring this guy in. Uh, because I think he's going to do a bunch of the work for us. And that could really matter. I think we want these. I think we want our big stuff for sure. What's not great against him? Yeah, you know, there's a lot that's not great against him. It's a hammer hand. All right, let's see if we can get a more decent draw here, though. I mean, not that our draw wasn't good, but a, a better opener. Yeah, like that. Interesting. I like this draw. This makes me want to trade. Got one living totem into the yard off of that. Ah, I see why he didn't block now. <clears throat> I kind of assumed he might take that trade. 
but this makes a lot more sense now. I have no idea what to name. I guess I'll name Elvish Mystic. He would have already played it if he had it. Isan? Just name Isan. Take that. Hmm. Okay, I think this works out pretty well for us. Okay, so now we just get a huge undergrowth scavenger. More important, slightly bigger than the invasive species. Interesting. So he's got a pump spell. And I'm just going to take this hit. We've got a pump spell to return. No, don't have Necrobite. Sweet. We're one short away from killing him. Ooh, that's going to matter. Yeah, that's pretty brutal. Oh, that's not bad, is it? I want to hit him with both, but I might want to keep the bear back for chumps because of the uh, invasive species being lethal. Yeah, I'm going to keep the bear back, not only for chump blocks, but to team up with invasive species.
Yeah, I think this is better just to have both creatures. Because that way, if he has Ulcerate, we don't die. I'm not in a good spot because of how much mana he has available, but we'll take what we can. And I'm going to double block. And hope that our uh, Undergrowth Scavenger being at 100-100 is good enough. Certainly not convinced that it will be. I think he's going to have an Ulcerate. Yeah, there we go. That thing has Trample. Ah, oh, yuck. So we need to draw two drop. Yeah, we're dead. If we drew a two drop there, we can chump block this thing. Just block the soul and live. But as it sits, we can't. Good games. All right, so we ended up losing in the second round there. Um, but that was to a good draw, a good game there in the second game, and just we didn't really get to play much in the first game. And that happens. Nice guy. Um, but yeah, you know, that happens. I think that uh, anybody who's drafted a fair bit has had that happen where it just sort of doesn't go your way one game, and then, eh, you know, maybe we make one different play. We do one different thing, and maybe we can win that game. I don't know. Um, I'd have to look at the, the footage. As, as you guys see, I mean, I'll, I'll make mistakes here and there and sometimes forget something. Uh, it takes a little bit of brain power, of course, to record the videos as well uh, when you can just sort of sit in solitude and dissect in, you know, take your time and all that kind of stuff. That you get a little bit more brain power out of it. Um, but this is, you know, pretty close to how I play. Um Thanks, guys, as always, for watching, and I do appreciate the feedback that you leave. And uh, and if you do happen to get back to me about the, the two things I asked about, then that's great, too. Um, if you guys want to send me an email, you can do that at lr at lrcast.com. Twitter, like I said before, is Marshall underscore LR. The clan is easy. We're over 4,000 members now. We've got a sweet community page uh, where a lot of the clan stuff happens and, and other limited resources-related stuff on Reddit. Um, it's reddit.com slash r slash LRCast. You can find that on LRCast.com as well. And uh, last but not least, for all things limited resources, including the links I just told you, my Twitter, all that stuff's on LRCast.com. Guys, we'll see you next week.